welcome to the Philippine Cinematography. Let's go back on how it's all began, the history of Philippine Cinematography. History of Philippine Cinematography or the Film Industry On January 1, 1897, the first film screenings in the Philippines took place. In 1897, Antonio Ramos, a Spanish soldier, first introduced the Lumiere Cinematograph in the Philippines. Film began to be acknowledged as another medium of art. The main sources of storyline and characterization were the stories from Philippine literature and popular theater. Jose Nepomuceno's Punyal Naginto or Golden Dagger premiered at the Lyric Theater on March 9, 1933. Punyal Naginto was described as the very first locally made talkie or film with sound. During this era, the local audience accepts Philippine cinema's focus on war and heroism. In the 1950s, considered as the first golden age of Philippine cinema, major Philippine film production studio brought out a slew of artistic and notable films, some of which have been internationally commended. Manuel Condes' Genghis Khan 1952 was one of the most notable. The first Asian film to be aired at the Venice and Cannes Film Festivals. At this juncture, the Philippine film industry averaged about 350 films per year, making the Philippines second to Japan in terms of number of film production per year in Asia. Well, 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 did you know that movies were first appeared in Philippine Island in 1897 during the rebel against Spain when two Swiss finance managers supported the kickoff of Cinematographo in Manila from this cine becomes slang for the film. In addition to that, Spain surrendered the Philippines to the U.S. in 1898 through the deal of Paris. U.S. powers went through the following three years subduing the Afibal. Two cinemas opened in Manila in 1900 and 1901. They show quiet narratives, the lone passage being made at that point. Movies began to change from narrative to diversion in 1909. Film dispersion organizations were set up in Manila to import these sorts of motion pictures from Hollywood. Film house before long job Manila. Neighborhood film were effective too. Let us now proceed to the pillars of the Philippine cinema. First on the list is the father of Philippine cinema. Hailed as the father of Philippine cinema, Jose Nefomuceno was born on May 15, 1893 in Manila. His contribution in the filmmaking industry was recognized for being the pioneer of motion industry in the Philippines in 1917 and producing the first all-Filipino picture in 1919 entitled The Lagang Bukid. In his 20s, he also started his own film company under the name of Mayan Movies, which later on became the major domestic film producer during the era of silent films. His other works include La Vanganza de Don Silvestre on 1920, La Mariposa Negra on 1920 also, El Capulo Marjito in 1921, and Hoy Onun Besame on 1923. And in 1930, he produced his greatest film of all time, which is still known in the present, No Limitangere. Second is the first Filipino filmmaker who brought the Philippines in the international scene. Releasing his firm film Mahiwagang Biolin in 1935, Manuel Conde, who was an actor, director, and producer, became the first Filipino who graced the international stage with his film Genghis Khan at the 1952 Venice Film Festival. And receiving enough recognition, the film was also included at the 1952 Edinburgh Film Festival. And he died in 1985 but was able to confer the title of National Artist for Cinema in 2009. Let us go deeper in learning about the profile of Philippine film industry. Did you know that the Philippines is the world's 7th largest film producer with 150 to 200 full-length featured films made annually? In 1986, the National Films Archives reported a total of 151 original Filipino featured films, with 139 in 1987. Movie cores in the Philippines can be divided into two groups depending on their references. The first one is the local income group, or as movie director Avellana put it, the bakya or wooden clogs group who choose to watch Tagalog films. The next one 
one is the higher to middle income group or the class group who choose to watch Hollywood films such as Superman and E.T. to chalk horror films. Our cinema today has a great history that we must learn. We, Filipinos, love to watch film as a form of leisure and family bonding or even romantic dates. Am I right? The death toll from the virus rises with pneumonia-like symptoms. Human-to-human -human transmission. Very serious public health threat. The number of known infections has risen sharply. 4,500 cases. thousand people have died. This pandemic came and brought so much downfall around the globe. The Philippine cinematography experienced it too. In today's status, when the year 2020 started, the film industry was ecstatic. Movie studios were planning their year's list, a summer film festival was planned, and productions were in the works. But all changed in March. Almost six weeks after the first reported COVID case in the Philippines, when lockdowns were implemented in various parts of the region. Productions for both television and film came to a halt almost immediately. It took more than a quarter for things to return to normal, except that normal this time meant new rules, procedures, and lock-in shoots. Distribution was also a major concern. In 2020, Philippine films started to be almost entirely streamed online. After a week's pause, classics, documentaries, and new films shot prior to the pandemic were finally released. I hope you had a greater from the past to the presence of the Philippine cinematography. Let us appreciate more than the works of the people behind that movies that we